Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and today we're taking a look at the Fluke Link IQ Duo Cable Plus Network Plus Wi Fi Tester. It's a reasonably compact tool for testing cable performance, verifying PoE, scanning Wi Fi, and even identifying switch info at the other end of the line. Now, to be clear right up front, this is not a cable certifier. It will not generate spec based certification reports for TIA or ISO standards, but it will tell you if a cable can handle up to 10 gig, whether PoE is working correctly by simulating a load, and help you troubleshoot real world issues. Fluke did send me this unit for review, but they have no editorial input into this video and it is not sponsored by Fluke, but it is sponsored by Meter, a company rethinking how enterprise networks are built and managed. Meter delivers wired, wireless, and cellular networking in one integrated solution, covering everything from hardware and software to deployment and support. Instead of juggling multiple vendors and fragmented tools, you get one stack that's fast, secure, reliable, and scalable, whether you're a branch office or a data center. Thank you to Meter for sponsoring this video. Go to meter.com slash Lawrence Systems to book a demo. That's M-E-T-E-R dot com slash Lawrence Systems to book your demo today. Now this is the Fluke Link IQ Duo with Wi-Fi. There's a couple of varied models of this, but this is specifically a dual Wi-Fi model. They make an industrial model. And they make another model that doesn't have Wi-Fi. What you get in the kit here is a remote ID tester. Now, this might be a fluke, but they put this one in my bag and I thought it was strange because I got number three, but I didn't get any other ones. Now, this is a kit that only comes with one. You can purchase the other ones. I uh, just found it odd that they had number three because it's best I can tell supposed to come with remote ID one. I've used the other Link IQ system and I've used these before. They're nice because when you plug them in on the other side, they will show you which ID is plugged in. Great for when you're doing labeling and setting things up. It did come with a USB cable, a strap that I'll probably never use. The idea of the strap is to put it on the Fluke itself and it does come with a charger, but uh, I've not even unwrapped it because one, the battery lasts an incredible amount of time. Two, you can just charge it over standard USB-C. Now they also do include inside of here, one cable for testing and some room to put a few more cables in here. Important note, the one they include does have a shielded cable and you can test to see if that shielding is in place. So I like that they gave you a shielded one so you can test that. And they also have the RJ45 joiner right here so you can join two network cables together. There's not a lot to the device itself, just the spot for the straps our RJ45 connection right here, and the USB-C on the side. That's it, except for this little compartment on the back, which of course, let's open it up. And we have a battery that is not glued in and, and well, relatively easy to get out, just a little connector inside of there. I love that it has a replaceable battery and they put a good size battery in here because this thing is quite power efficient and you can use this pretty much all day testing cables and you're not, running out of battery. All the testing we've done with over the last couple months, really, I have not charged it that many times. I'm really impressed with how well that works. Now it's a nice sunny day here in Michigan and I want to do a quick test. I'm standing in the shadow and the sunlight's right there. So obviously this is relatively easy to read outdoors and in the shadow and it's a pretty bright sunny day out. There's no clouds in the sky, but let's see if we put it in sunlight here. It's still pretty readable. I'm impressed with the screen. I thought that was something I really wanted to test by putting it in the sun and showing you real world that if you were up on a ladder doing an outdoor project, installing some Wi-Fi, some cameras you wanted to test, that you would be able to very easily read the test results and not have to do the whole, you know, shadowy thing and make it kind of a pain. I know this is a problem that is well solved on cell phones, good brightness, and uh, it's actually solved on this as well. They chose a really good screen. I want to start it here in the settings menu. By default, it auto increments all the test results, but you can override that to have all the test results done manually and enter a number each time. When it creates each test, it just increments one, two, three, four, et cetera. So you can export them later with the LinkView software. Network settings. By default, it's DHCP because this will acquire an IP address as part of the test, which of course leads it to what did you like it to ping? I have it set up just to ping IP 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. You can put it whatever you want in here and then have it perform the ping test. You'll notice that I have the brightness turned quite a bit down when I was outdoors. I had it all the way up, so that was at full brightness at outside, but inside it just doesn't need to be that bright. So even down here, almost to the bottom, it's still quite bright enough to see and easily balanced here in the studio. You also have your CDP, LLDP timeout, auto shut off, which I have off right now because it's not been a battery problem just to leave it on while you're testing. So you're not waiting for it to power up. The boot up time on it is relatively fast. I think it takes about eight or nine seconds to boot up. It's not a big deal to wait. Uh, you have your units of management, feet or meters, date and time, language, 
and firmware. I have done a firmware update on it. So it went smooth. I didn't have any issues. You do it via their link view software. Coming back over to home, let's do a basic cable test. Now, right now there's no cable plugged in. So it goes fast and doesn't give us much information other than it doesn't find anything. I have just an open-ended cable we're gonna plug in real quick. Now there's nothing on the other end of this cable. It's simply a 25 footer, I think. I feel confident that it's 25 feet, but yep, 25 feet. And then we can look at the pairs and it gives you the details for each pair that it finds. Now, if we take and plug in the remote ID on this, we go ahead and run the test again. It gives us a pass and lets us know this cable will do 10 gig without a problem. And once again, you can save the results and I'm just gonna pass on saving those and just hit exit. Now there is an auto test and the auto test will go through this test because it's only a cable here and it's not plugged into a switch. So it doesn't give any more information yet, but let's go ahead and plug it into a switch and run the auto test again to go through the entire test. So we'll let it go through the full cycle auto test which will test the cable and talk to the switch. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the results, but it takes about 15, 20 seconds to run this. That does include PoE testing that we'll do. Now the test results are complete. We have the test details. We even have the ping time on here. It let us know which cable pairs are working for this particular PoE and the wattage that it supports and the hardware class. Now, if we go back up to the top, because it also does a switch test, it lets us know what it pulled from the switch. It was able to realize this is VLAN 5, the VLAN name is 5, those are correct. Uh, the MAC address, switch description, and switch name. Depending on the switch, different information may or may not be able to be pulled from the fluke. A couple of advanced options we have, we hit the wrench here. We have a tone generator where it plays a few different tunes. It also has ability to blink the port light. So like this, it will simply make the port on the switch blink on and off every couple seconds. Now let's talk about Wi-Fi. We can look at the different networks available and there's a few of them here. We have uh, one hidden network and a few others. If we touch any of these, we can see the different radios and all the different access points that are broadcasting. If we would like to do a test, and after a spin run, it does connect to the network and gives you the signal strength here. It also does a ping test, but this ping test is not continuous. It won't just keep updating. It'll only do this once. So it's got round trip ping time packets, DNS information for being connected to this particular network, the IP address, but it's not doing a continuous ping. So it's not giving me any like constantly real time updated information, but it will continue to save the Wi-Fi data, and if I were to be wandering around, you would see the strength drop up and down as it went between different access points. But it does give you the details here, which of the modes that are available, how it's connected, and if we hit stop, we can save, hit OK, and I'll go ahead and save those results. Now I have results for a couple different ones in here, so you can review, and maybe as you were walking around, you want to do some strength tests for each location. That's what this could be good for. So you can compare each place. Maybe you want to update the Wi-Fi to have better coverage and make notes inside of here. It's not too hard typing on the screen. I'm going to say that the Wi-Fi is adequate on this, but it's not going to replace a really high-end dedicated Wi-Fi device that's made for doing this exclusively. Those devices generally have quite a bit more features than this does. Now, if you just want to see the channels, you can see them. You can go back and forth and scroll to see all the channels and where any of the overlap may be. And we're going to go over here to six gigahertz because it's one of those things that may not be obvious. It looks like, oh, there's nothing here. You just got to make sure you scroll all the way over to wherever those channels might be where it detects it. Let me scroll back because I know there's at least one six gigahertz that should be picking up in my network here. It's still thinking. This is something I've noticed it will do is take a little bit before it will discover all the networks. There's all the five gigahertz ones. Let's go back and see if it's detecting the six yet. There it is. I did all this in real time, no fast forwarding. It just takes a moment, it seems like, more so on the six, but it does scan through these relatively well. But as I said, it's not as good as some of the devices that have a series of dedicated antennas, but this is a nice to have so you can at least get an idea of the Wi-Fi network around you and some of the details. So this meter has been in use for several months. We've taken it to Florida, Texas, and 
a lot of other hot places where a lot of cables were tested and even the heat didn't seem to bother it. I did not do any high drop tests with this. I did test previously one of the Link IQs and test would be, well, what we called accidentally dropping off a ladder because that occasionally happens. I was going to do a follow-up review with the original Link compared to this, but uh, during this time period, unfortunately, the van where this was was stolen. So we don't have the original one anymore that I reviewed several years ago on my channel. Uh, so we've been using only this one. They really do look the same. They're still made quite durable. I have like my old Fluke multimeter here. It has been dropped many times all over the place and beat up in the garage and still works perfectly well. Fluke does have a good reputation for making a high quality product and I don't feel any different about this. As I said, in a kind of an overall, it's a great cable tester, but eh, so, so on the Wi-Fi, but it is a nice extra feature that it has in here as I was showing. But of course, it comes down to, is it worth it? That is tough. I like the USB-C charging. I love all the features. I love a solid device like Fluke. This is why I have several of their multimeters and other tools that I've bought. Um, I do know this was sent to me and someone will say, well, you're only reading because it, it was sent to you. And no, we do buy nice tools and the techs buy nice tools, but it is not cheap. That's what I'm getting at here. I know it's an expensive product. So you have to do some math on yourself of, do you use this? Is it really important to you to have a really high quality tool? then it's probably worth it. If you just do this once in a while and you just really want to spend some money, maybe it's worth it for you. Uh, but it's definitely going to be among the more expensive devices you buy for network testing. Uh, but the quality, the screen, the USB-C charging, the battery life, all of that being great. Uh, you can also use their LinkView software to pull the data out and save and do reporting if you'd like. As I said, it's not a full certifier, but you can get some reports and get some statistics and that may be worth it for you. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, hit me up in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com. And thanks again, Meter, for sponsoring this video. Take care.